Good morning and welcome to Qigong Online Online. This is the advanced class. So today we're gonna to do we're gonna do legs. We're gonna do some exercise for your legs, especially for your quads. And I'll explain why we're going to do that. It's all about the energy. So let's bow into class and we'll get going. Put your hands on the side of your body, roll back onto your thumbs. Lift it underneath right hand on top, two thumbs together. Cool. Make a fist with the left hand, cover with your right, bring it towards your heart. And then down to your physical center. Very good. So why are we doing legs today? So one of the main longevity exercises is an exercise where you're using your quads and you're, you're bending down. And I'm not going to do this particular exercise today. But this, it, it's, it's on YouTube somewhere. You can find it. Just look for, um, it's called brushing the grass for longevity. And you'll find, if you find a Qigong exercise for longevity on my, on my uh, playlist, you'll find it there. It's there. But we're, well, I want to do a, a different, couple of different exercises. But why the thighs? Why the thighs would be good for longevity? Well, they're the biggest muscles in your whole body. And so, of course, not only the biggest muscles, they have the most energy and they have the most blood supply because they're the biggest muscles. So logical. So if you start working these muscles, then you start producing more chi and you, and you need more blood. So you need more blood for the muscles because they're biggest. And you need more energy for them as well. So as soon as you work any muscles, the body has to start producing young energy for the muscles so the power comes in for the muscles. So if you're using the biggest muscle, you get more young energy. So this is a logical understanding. So the more power you get, the more young power you get, the more you engage these muscles. So there in Qigong systems, there's lots of exercises that engage these two big muscles for that obvious reason. As I say, one of them is the longevity exercise, which I talked about. We're going to do a couple of those exercises. Before we do that, we're going to warm them up a bit before we do that as well. So we're going to do a couple of exercises just to warm up the thighs here. Yeah? First of all, we're going to spread our part, legs apart and we just sit, whoops, watch out for the, for the gong, and we're just going to stretch the legs here. Yeah? Just stretch the, the the thigh muscle, stretch it so we we, we make, it, make it longer so it's not compressed. Yeah, and we'll do the other side. Stretching forward, there we go, perfect. And we'll do this a couple of times, eh? we'll do that like it. And the other side again. Just a stretch to wake up the thigh muscle. Eh? Good. Then we're going to do squats. We're going to go down. So the easiest ways to do this is to bend down yeah, and stand up. Now, you can go right down, sit right down, and you can sit there and you can feel the pulling of the, of the quads. And you can stretch there. You can bounce up and down a little bit just to feel it just expanding a little bit. Then stand up. Cool. And then go down and then up. So this is just engaging the muscles. Yeah. Good. We do our knees. Bring our knees. Before we actually put their feet apart for this one. Do two knees. This is engaging the connections the the quad muscles have to your knee joints. And all around the knee knee capsule, where there's lots of connections of ligaments and tendons around your knee joints. So that's the bottom part. And we're going to do the top part, which is your hip. So we're going to move our hips. So now we're engaging the ligaments and tendons at the top of the muscles. We've already stretched the muscles. Now we're activating the ligaments and tendons here. Go one way, go the other. There you go. Nice and simple. From side to side, so you can feel the stretches. So you can feel when you're inside, you can feel the stretch pulling on the the top of your your quad muscles. Very good. Good. And go forward and backwards and feel the stretch. Pull them back. You feel them pulling and pulling along the quads. And these aren't super deep stretches. They just activate the muscle, so the muscles engage. So once it's engaged. Because we're waking it up, the body's already producing more blood to get to this muscle. The body's already circulating blood to the to the area. It's also circulating more chi to the muscles because now this, the leg, leg muscles are demanding more energy because they're engaged. So 
So that's good. So you can feel that. And what it'll do is heat you up. Now, it's one of the easiest, easiest ways to get hot is to do quad muscles. You just keep doing those exercises, keep going up and down like that. And it's almost like a pump and you're just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter because it's engaging the biggest muscles, engages lots of heat because you get a lot of young energy and the young energy, of course, creates a lot of heat. It doesn't always create heat. I've got to be careful how I say that. But because we are engaging the muscles and because we want to engage the young energy, then that, because of that, then it's going to create the heat. It's not, it's not, I shouldn't say that young always creates heat because that's not necessarily true. Yep. So... Now our muscles are nice and warm here, yeah, and then you want them to relax too, so there's always relax, so I'm just massaging them now. So just wobbling them from side to side, just to get them all nice and lubricated. Because you want them relaxed. Muscles are more beneficial. I remember in my younger days, I'm, I was at, in New Zealand, they had the Commonwealth Games, which is like the Olympic Games, but the New Zealand version of the Olympic Games. And I, I was um, working on a... Uh, a sprinter who was a New Zealand champion sprinter. And I thought, you know, the big muscles, and you see the sprinters, they have really big muscles. Yep. And, but he did, he was a you know, big, strong guy, but his muscles were soft, which was quite, I thought they'd be really hard, like a weight lifter, you know, muscles quite often are hard. But his muscles were super soft. And I said, well, that's interesting. They're, they're a lot more flexible and soft. And he said, yeah, but when I get the power, they expand and they get stronger and bigger. And then when I relax, they get soft. But when I'm running, the more relaxed I am, the faster I can run. And I go, oh, I understand the principle of that. So it wasn't about the tension running. It was about how much you could relax. And inside the relaxation, you get more energy. So then you go faster. Morning, Mike. Good to see you here on the class. So this was important. So it's, as I said, I was... I was was with his legs and his legs were just soft even though there was big muscles but they were just super relaxed and so now I want to have the same feeling of mine that my legs are relaxed because I understand that principle and the same with my arm muscles there there's a lot of power in the muscles if I flex my muscles but when I'm not flexed they just completely relax and they're soft there's no tension in them yeah and we, we want that we don't want the tension we want the relaxation because that's where the muscle the chi and the blood travel smoothly so the exercise we're going to do for these, we're going to do, we're going to do two. We take, actually both of them are from the Bhagwan Jin sets of exercises. And one's called looking west and east, drawing the bow to shoot the eagle. It's a really long name. Of course, we don't shoot eagle. It's a prince, there's a, a spiritual principle about the eagle and what the eagle represents and what you're shooting. Part of it's to do with yourself coming in contact with the eagle, which is representation of a certain energetic spirit in Chinese medicine. Yep. And so this is the exercise, but we're going to do that in a double horse stance. So normally we stand in single and we have our knees bent. But to make the pressure on the spot on the, the quads, we're going to do a double. So the single one is just one foot space apart, but a double has got two foot apart. And then you put your feet out either side of the double. Now you can do this in treble as well, tr three paces out, depends on how flexible we are. Then you're going to bend your knees down that way. And your knees go out towards your toes. So your knees are above your toes. Yeah, they're above your toes. And you'll stand like that, and you tuck your pelvis forward. So when we're standing, you don't want to stand off, just do this badly. You don't want to stand like that, with your bum sticking out like that. You want to have your back straight, and come right through and tuck your belly. So your back's nice and straight, and you're sitting there like that, and your knees out above your toes. Yep. Like that. Double horse stance that way. Good. Now bring your hands down. Now turn your hands over and pull them up. Now you're going to sit in the stance for the whole time. So basically I'm engaging with these thigh muscles the whole time. They're not going to get a rest. They're just going to stay constantly activated. Pull your hands around. Pull them back onto your hips. And then pull them right up underneath your armpits. Then turn the hands over. And then push the two hands out. Good. We're going to do the right side first. I'm going to mirror you. So open the palm of the right hand. Turn the palm to the front. Then come around. Remember, keep your pelvis tucked while you're standing in this position. It's like grabbing the string of a bow and you change the hands to the archer's hand and to the bear claw and you pull it back and you can feel your legs now. You'll be able to feel your, your calves engaged. You'll be able to feel your thighs engaged. So turn your fist around and then create two fists. Good. Left hand, open the palm. Turn the palm to the front. Comes around. Keep nice and low. Go, go around, low as you can. Grab the string of the bow, change it. Archer's hand, bear claw. I'm going to explain this. I'm going to explain the two hands. Breathing in. And then turn the fist, breathing out. Good. 
and just put your hand down and bring your hand down. Now, can you feel that engagement for your legs? Unless you do a lot of leg exercises, that will be, you're going to be able to feel how much tension builds up in the legs. And then when, as soon as you come out of the stance, you will not relax again. So the two hands, this is, I'll put it out there so you can see it. So this is the archer's hand. We have one finger facing up, and you've got three fingers and thumb all facing together. I did a whole, uh, um, there's a short on this somewhere, about understanding the energy comes out of the, th the four fingers and the comes together and meets in the middle and comes out in this thing just like the um what was the the death star in star wars you know when they cut the beams that they all show shot out and they all linked together and one beam went off and destroyed the planet that's happening inside this laogong's the center point and they're connecting that and this one connecting to heaven so you're getting heaven's energy inside that so that's like that's the hand that one the other one's a bear claw looks like that now it's different to a tiger's claw which looks like that i'll do it out the side so you can see it in the dark yeah, so a tiger claw looks like that, and a bear's claw looks like that. The difference being, if you have a look at the tiger's claw, and when you see when a tiger walks, it walks when it puts its feet down, it does this. It's a beautiful movement when a, when a tiger walks. But a bear doesn't walk like that. So the bear's claw has, has like a straight arm. Whoops, that way. Like the arm's straight, straight down the side. It's a straight arm, and it has a claw at the top. And so just the fingers are turned over. But it's not like that, which is the claw. It's like that, and it's just straight all the way through the wrist. All the way through the wrist is straight, and then the, cl the claws at the other end are just clinked over that way. Good, and that's what grabs the bow, and you pull the bow with that hand. Okay, back in the double stance, because I should have shown you that first before we started, but we're gonna, that was a warm-up. We go back to the same stance. Double horse stance, knees out towards the side. Now you'll find that it's not so hard now, because you've already warmed them up now. Put your hands to the side, turn your both wrists over. Pull them back underneath your armpit. Good. Turn the fists over. Good. Push them out. Good. Open your right hand first. Palm face towards the ground. Look at your hand. Turn it round. Then bring it round. Yeah. And when it comes around, grab the string of the bow, the claw, the bear claw, and then the archer's hand. And then pull it back. So you're pulling the string of a bow back. And you're breathing in. And then both relax, both hands breathing out. Open the right, the left hand, palm to the front, palm. There's a few different ways you can do this exercise. This is a particular version of this, of the archer stance. Pull it in. And relax, both hands go out to the side. Keep pushing your knees out towards the side, tuck your pelvis at the same time, feel the, feel the weight. Open the right hand again, palm towards the front. Bring the hand around. Feel the thighs engaged. Breathe it out as you come around. Change the hands, breathing in. And then breathe out. Breathe it in as you open the hand, the left hand. Turn it to the front, breathe it out as you come around. Grab the fingers again, grab the swing of the bow, breathing in. And then breathing out. Do you notice during this time I don't have straight arms? So even when I'm standing with this particular posture, my arm's not straight. I want the arm slightly bent so there's no blockage in the shoulder, in the elbow, the shoulder, or well, the shoulder too, and the elbow. So as soon as I lock my shoulder, my elbow, I said the same thing twice, as soon as, as, soon as I lock my elbow, then it stops the chi traveling. But as soon as the, if the elbow is slightly relaxed, then the energy and the move moves down the arm a lot easier from this part. See, so when I pull it back, and even when I go to the side, you see my both hands are slightly bent. I'm not locked like that. I'm relaxed. The shoulders are relaxed, the elbows relax, wrists relax. Yeah. Open your palms and then slowly bring your hands down, slowly stand up. Now you'll feel your, your quads working. And step back together. There you go. Very good. Now you can shake them out, especially if you haven't done this exercise for a while. The more you do this, of course, you're stronger your legs get. So that's as simple as that. It's like any practice. And you want to have strong legs because remember, this creates lots of power. You produce a lot of energy through the quads. And that's why doing the squats, doing the squats for warm ups. It's such a good thing to generate lots of power and generate lots of chi, yeah? lots of yang chi. We're doing one more exercise, and it's called turn and wag the tail of the dog. Now, 
This is an exercise that's actually good for heart fire, for getting rid of fire out of your heart, which is an agitation you get into your heart if you get too much heat in your heart. And you, you, agitation of the heart, you'll, it's like you become a bit manic. It's like everything's a bit... And you, and you might know people that, that in your life or in your circle that's a bit like that. You feel them. They're a little bit highly strung and you can feel that. There's this little bit of manicness and that's because it's got too much fire in their heart. They'll also have trouble sleeping. They'll be insomniacs because of that. It'll disturb their shin as well. So this exercise is one of the ways of getting rid of the heart fire by breathing it out and you're using the young lung chi to get rid of the heart fire and you breathe it out yeah it's a great exercise now double horse stance again and we say squat yourself down tuck your pelvis forward sit down double horse stance now your knees are these are above your toes again now you're going to turn your hands over so they're sitting back the front so your thumbs are facing outwards and your hands are that way so look like that yep and i'm going to go to the right side first and i'm going to turn turn the torso and i'm going to bend down the right side and I'm going to look down that way. Now I'm going right down and keep it straight back. I'm looking forward. And I'm, my head's going to go across the front. And I'm turning right across the other side. Then I'm going to sit up. And we're going to come back to the front again. So double stance again. Tuck the pelvis forward. Then I'm going to go down. And I'm going to breathe out this time. And breathe out through my mouth. And I'm going to breathe out all the way across the front. Breathing out the heart fire, breathe in. Breathe in all a good chi into your heart. Back into the double position. Breathe out again. Breathe in. And then breathe out. Breathe in. Now you can feel your calves are your quads are engaged. One more time, breathing out. Breathing out the heart fire. Breathe in, and then back one more time. Come back to the front, then turn to the front, and then slowly bring straighten your legs up, and then bring your leg back in again. Very good. Well done. Now, same thing again. You'll see you're increased in heat because of it as well. So, same thing again. Generating lots of power because you've engaged the biggest muscles in the body. So, with this exercise, make sure you have your feet facing parallel to the front. Don't have them out to the side facing that way. They want them facing towards the front that way. And then the knees go out that way. Now, it's a strange stance to push your knees out when your feet are facing front. But it's like, like, it's like sitting on a horse. And yet they call it horse stance, but this is a double horse stance. So when you're sitting on the horse, your legs come out and they go straight down, but your feet are still facing towards the front. So you're not necessarily facing out to the side, they're facing that way. And you want that idea of that, and then once you get there, tuck your pelvis forward to stop you sticking your bottom out the back. Yeah, That one there. When you turn, you turn your waist, your whole waist turns, and you go down one side, across the other side, and you come back up that side, and then turn back to the front. It's Reset it and then start again. And then go down the opposite side, across, back up again, and then back to the center. So you always want to go back to the center position each time. Turn, down, across, step back up again, rotate back to the center and start from there. Then go back, down, across, and back up again, and then back to the center. Very good. So that's the exercise. Now I would encourage you if you do that, do it three times each side and do it every day. It's a great exercise. It, does, it, does not, it also is really good for stress and strain in the body. It takes stress out of the body, it takes strain out of the body as well. So mental stress, physical strain, it'll help relieve it out of the body. But as I say, the main thing that it does is the heart fire. And you'll notice the difference. You'll feel a lot calmer. You'll find your balances, your emotions, and you'll find you'll sleep better as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Have you any questions about those three exercises? I'll put them in the description anyway. And if you have any questions about it, please ask. And if you watch this class later on, six months' time or whenever, if you say you practice and come up, please ask me a question because I'll always answer. I'll always get back to it. Somebody always lets me know if you've asked. And I'll get back to you with any answers. But they're, they're very, very cool exercises, these two. And do check out the longevity exercise. It's called Qigong for longevity. I think it's in my in my playlist somewhere.
you'll find it in there. Just write t search search for that, and you'll find it, and you'll see the exercise. But this is exercise. This one it's called brushing the grass, and that's an exercise you can do every day. And it just it's one exercise for longevity. So it's incredibly potent because it creates so much power in your body, flexibility, blood flow, chi flow, makes your heart fit, helps to calm your mind. It's such a great exercise anyway. So we'll just bow out. So putting our feet together, our feet face off to the tender two, put your hands on the side of the body, roll back onto your thumbs. Left hand underneath, right hand on top, two thumbs together. Gong. Make a fist with your left hand, cover it with your right, bring it towards your heart and then down to your physical center. Very cool. And step back and bow to everybody that's watching this video today. And for anybody that does in the future, if you have any questions, please ask. Have a beautiful week, everybody. Bye-bye.